All right, well, welcome. Uh, want to do, we wanted to start with a little bit of audience research. How many of you already currently have a full-time job in Web3? Uh, about 50-50. Uh, All right. Maybe like 40-60. That's a good crowd. All right, good stuff. So how many of you by, like at some point this year, are begging and pleading to have a full-time job in Web3? Right? All right. Well, we used to not have a, uh, is it okay to say used to not? Is it used to not, yeah. We used to not have a Web3 job full-time, but now do, and work with trondow.org. So introductions, Feroz, tell the crew a little bit about you. Uh, so my name is Feroz Lakani. Uh, I traditionally come from a marketing and retail background, and I got into Web3 probably around 2019, 2020, in like the trading aspect and very quickly just got enamored with the technology behind it and started learning, started going down the rabbit hole of, of how blockchain actually works and what value it can bring to retail and marketing to the stuff that I had previous experience in. Um, and I just, I never looked back. I love it, I love it. I'm Jason Dukes, I'm a uh, content lead with Tron Dow. And so both of us were in different careers uh, previously. I mean, real quickly, talk about what you did prior to diving into the Web3 world? So I traditionally, like I said, I was in marketing. I worked for Samsung for a while. I started in retail with cell phones, uh, didn't have like a degree in marketing or anything. I was just really passionate about what I did and about, the, again, the technology behind the mobile devices that I was working with. Um, got recruited into their marketing team and ended up helping launch uh, their, their retail project in 2019 in, in California as well. And the, the evolution for me was more of like I learned marketing while working in marketing, and then I got into the hardware side. And very quickly, you know, 5G phones and folding phones started coming out, and I learned how to calibrate 5G antennas and fix folding screens very quickly. And then it, it just hit me. I was like, if something this complicated can be learned this quickly, then something as, as complicated as building in blockchain should also be fairly simple once you start learning it. If you're passionate about it, if it's something that you really want to do, uh, you should be able to learn it. And so that, you know, that kind of led me into just learning more about blockchain, learning more about the technology. Um, I had no traditional development or programming experience, and I, I noticed, you know, in traditional programming languages and careers, people have gone to college, they've worked for five to 10 years to, to gain the experience. This industry is so young, nobody has a college degree on how to build a dApp, how to build things on blockchains. Those things are just now getting started. Everything that you need to learn is, is online, um, and so, that kind of led me down the, the rabbit hole of like working during the day in marketing and retail and at night just learning about how I can build something for myself in this new space. Um, yeah, and then after about a year, year and a half of that, I, I didn't want to work any, in, in anything outside of blockchain. I was like, I want to get paid to do this during the day and I want to do it at night for myself. I, I don't want to do anything else. And it's, it's just been, a, it's been an awesome journey since. Um, I, I wanted to actually hear a little bit more about you because I know you have a completely different background than I do, and you also got really enamored with the actual potential of blockchain, and you use it, you've used it probably a lot longer than I have, so um, why don't you tell a little bit about how you got into this industry? Yeah, so I, I, I was uh, for nearly 28 years in nonprofit work, and uh, it, part of that, for 10 years of that, I also did for-profit entrepreneurialism and was part of boards that worked with different startups and things like that, and and so um, that was kind of my world. And I always had done futuristic things and kind of leveraged what that looked like, especially in helping nonprofits be a lot more effective and efficient at what they were doing. Um, always did content development, have been published and things like that, and, um, and, and did a lot of consulting in that realm. And so, you know, I, I, I decided at the most opportune time, like it was just a safe and a, and a, and a, and a secure moment, it was right in the middle of COVID right, where I decided I would pivot uh, from what I was doing. I was still had a job, uh, but just was so taken by what the technology, not, not just the, the art or the stories or all the things that we were doing with that technology, but, but just the technology itself and how disruptive it could be. And so, so I, I just dove in. I mean, I, it was October of 2020, and I just pivoted, dove in full time. 
uh, started uh, my own thing as well as just got contracted to do other things. Ended up working in NFT projects and ended up working, uh, consulting with several local businesses where I was in the Nashville area and talking to them about what Web3 even was. I was an educator in my background as well, and so ended up getting asked to do that, like getting to go talk to, even though I was, I mean, it, it, was, it, was, it was always funny to me because I, I had not been in it very long at all, and, and at that point, even in 2020, which I know that wasn't OG status, but even in 2020, right, if you just were in it a month, it felt like you were in it a long time, right? And so, um, so all that to say, just started doing the education piece and then ended up through volunteerism as well as some contracts. We did a lot of writing in it and ended up then getting with, uh, hired with Tron Dow. So, so you uh, jumped in, obviously, as, as working in the focus of partnerships, enterprise, things like that. Like, like talk about, though, I mean, it, it, it had to be daunting, right? Like, this was this new technology it was but but talk about just how you did go down that rabbit hole like what were the steps that you took to really get yourself ready to make that pivot so i think it, it was kind of a slow burn um the one thing i would say is follow any and all rabbit holes that you find like there's a limit of how deep you go and how much time you spend of course like everything is good in moderation right um but i would say follow the rabbit holes if you're interested in something if you're passionate about something this industry this industry is so big and like you've heard everything from GameFi to music NFTs to bring you know traditional stocks and Forex into blockchain. Um, there's so many different industries that are now getting into what the blockchain infrastructure can provide and how it can help them innovate their industries that it's, it's not gonna slow down anytime soon. So whatever focus that you've had traditionally, whatever your passion is traditionally, I would say try to find where that intersects with blockchain and just learn as much as you possibly can. Um, scratch that itch, you know, go down that rabbit hole. Uh, you just, you have to be very proactive about it. If it's something that you wanna do, you have to position yourself to be one of the best in the industry, whether it's just because of the, the amount of knowledge you have, because of how much you've invested, uh, your time, your energy, your resources. Um, you wanna make sure that you're putting in the work because that's what's gonna show in the results. Uh, it's really easy to give up, right? Especially like whether you're switching into blockchain or any other career um, or even building your own project, protocol, business, uh, you know, NFT collection. It can be something as small as an, as an NFT collection. You still have to build a community. You have to bring value. There's a lot of things that go into it and there's a lot of unique aspects that, that you can take based on the traditional experience and the passion that you have. Um, and, you know, one, one big thing I know that a lot of people find daunting is I don't have a programming and development background. That's something that I'm very, very, very passionate about. Um, I, my friend Steven here, we've become very good friends over the past few months, but last year he was at NFT NYC. We met up, we talked for the first time. He, he's been in crypto for almost five or six years, I think, a, a very long time compared to a lot of us. And his one thing was, man, I would really love to work in blockchain. Like I love it and I trade it. I, I'm very heavily invested. I, I, this is a technology I believe in, but like, I don't know how I can work in this. Like, I don't know anything about it, you know, on that level. And that's right away. I was like, dude, you don't have to, like, I didn't know anything about developing programming. I don't know how to write smart contracts. I started learning solidity less than two years ago. And even now there are so many options for copy paste, templated, pre audited smart contracts. If you take the time, to learn how this technology works, it actually is very simple. Like it's it's a ledger. It's it's as simple as that, right? It's it's just a ledger. Once you understand what the language is and how it works, there are resources, you know, there there are resources everywhere and they're free. So it becomes less daunting the more you learn. Like you you start to understand, like you think that there's so much I don't know. The more you learn, the more you realize like there's even more that you don't know. And every single thing you don't know right now is just an opportunity for you to learn, for you to grow. You'll see like ideas that you have that you start with will evolve. As you build them out, you start seeing how much more needs to be done. You wanna secure it more, you wanna offer more value. Or there's a new innovation in blockchain and you can do something cooler with the technology, with a new standard and things pivot, things change, things grow. Um, and you always have to be flexible. You have to be, you have to be proactive and you have to be persistent in, in what you're doing and in continuing to move forward in what you're learning. And yeah, like I said, it, it becomes very, like it becomes less and less daunting the more you learn. That's, that's like the, the snippet, I would say. I love that. And I, I think what I would add to that is, is from my perspective, 
not being someone that really never was code had coded or had, had ever been in, in a part of anything like that, you may feel the same way. You may say, you know, I'm not a tech person. I'm not in that realm. And I would just say, what are you passionate about? Like take inventory, take inventory of the assets that you have. What what have people said, this is what I'm strong in? in? What, what have people affirmed you in? And then ask yourself, who can I network with? Who seems to be doing substantive work? And then as you engage with those that you're networking with that are doing substantive work, volunteer to offer value to what they're doing, right? So take that inventory, see what, what have you been affirmed in, network, find substantive work, and then volunteer to offer value to what they're doing. And I think you'll find that your network, your relationships are growing, but it's also given you a chance to build your resume to say, I worked on this, I did this, I helped with this. And, and, and that allows you to then kind of take those first steps to get in. And so speaking of first steps, like it, it's a super competitive market right now. Uh, you know, during the bull run, it seems like they were hiring for anything, right? But, <laughs> But we, we've, we're in a different moment right now, and so there's been ups and downs and ebb and flow. Like, talk about that as we wrap up here. Talk about what that was like to, to navigate even some of maybe the discouragement of trying to pivot into this. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's cyclical, right? Like, it goes up and down. You'll see bull runs. You'll see bear markets. And, again, I, I'm not OG in crypto. Like, I, I, really, really, I got in maybe 2019, beginning of 2020, c close to the pandemic, uh, like what you mentioned. And so, for me, I got in when it was a Super Bowl market. Like, everybody was having an amazing time. Everybody was making a lot of money. And like you said, everybody was getting hired for everything. Um, things change. Things change very quickly. And this is, um, this is a very, very innovative technology. Like, this, it moves so fast. What I was seeing when I first got into the industry is it's like a night and day to what I see now. And I can only imagine, like, that's what I've seen in the past three years, what's going to happen over the next five or the next ten years, right? So there's, there are always going to be cycles. I think it's, it's about patience. And anybody that's been successful in anything will, I think, tell you the same thing. It's, it's about patience. If you're, if you're persistent about what you're doing, you truly believe in what you're doing, then you just have to be patient. Good things take time. This industry is is an amazing thing. It's one of the most innovative things. Like, I, I don't remember the last time in history that there was a new way to create currency, like to actually have, like to bypass every border that we've created as humans and be able to transact with people all across the world instantly, easily. It's, it's, it seemed impossible until it happened. And it's still very, very early in that cycle. So I think just, you know, over all that we've talked about, I would say, I, I wanna talk about the three things that, that I normally focus on, right? Being proactive, learning as much as you can, being persistent, not giving up, pushing forward always, even when there is discouragement. You know, I, I actually got into this industry officially. I was, uh, I saw my marketing background and I saw Tron was, if not the biggest, one of the biggest blockchains in the world. And I was like, there's an opportunity to help them with marketing and change, you know, how we're represented in the United States and really grow the, the user base that we have, the developer base that we have. And like, I'm just now learning how to build on blockchain, but I know how to market and I know how to position things to where we can show the unique value that they bring. And I, I saw a very good opportunity in Tron. I'm thankful for the fact that I was hired at the perfect time when, when I was going down this rabbit hole. Um, but I was patient. I started learning Solidity. I started building my side projects for well over a year, year and a half. They didn't go anywhere because I was so focused on trying to make the perfect thing and I got caught up in the cycle of learning and like, how do I build this? I need to learn this first. So if you're, if you're patient, if you're proactive and you're persistent, like those three things will get you to success. No matter what your goal is in life, if it's pivoting to a career in Web3, of course, that's what we're here to talk about. But in general, I think those three things are, are key to being successful in anything you wanna do. So I, I think patience is gonna be the final and most important one. I love that. Yeah, a buddy of mine uh, used to be uh, in, in work with a lot of athletic teams, and he used to use the word preportunity. And, you know, yeah, and I like it. the idea of preportunity, right? Like you, this is a moment. We're, we're in this beginning of the second renaissance. We're in this moment of the decentralized industrial res revolution happening. And there's no better time to prepare for the opportunity. So I just would challenge you, like, look to network. 
figure out how you bring value, be patient, persistent, proactive, go for it, and we appreciate the time. Yep. Thank that you, everybody. Awesome. <laughs>